Seches Ksuba Staff Vez begins with a discussion on when is the proper time of the week, what is the day of the week in which a woman is supposed to get married. The Mishnah will give the halacha and a reason for it. The Gemara will give its own reasons for it and try to see how it drives the fact that the Mishnah gives a reason. Then we'll get into what happens if there's an onit since you can't get married in the right at the time, who's held responsible for it. And then the Gemara will say what happens if you have an onus in the situation of a get, a bill of divorce, that's given with a condition, and the condition is accidentally fulfilled because of a prefending onus what's halacha there. So let's begin. The Mishnah says that the halacha is that a besula is supposed to get married on a Wednesday and an almana is supposed to get married on a Thursday. Besula is a virgin, woman who was never married before. Almana is a widow. So those are the days. Now the Mishnah gives the reason. The Mishnah says the reason is because we want the besula to get married right before the day before the court convenes. The court convenes on a Monday and on a Thursday. The, Mish- the Gemara will explain why she can't get married on a Sunday and go to court on Monday. But she has to therefore get married on Wednesday so that they can go to court on Thursday if necessary. Why would it be necessary to go to court? The reason is that she may be found to not be Absula, she may be found to have misrepresented herself as Absula, and if she's not Absula, she may be ushered to her husband, she may have been Mizana, she may have been uh, adulterous while she was engaged to him, while she was an Arusa to him, in which case she is actually ushered to be married to him. We want them to be able to go to court, therefore the next day we don't want them to forget about it or to not care. about it. Therefore, since the court convenes on Thursday, we tell them to get married on Wednesday so they can go straight to court the next day. Now, the Gemara begins. The Gemara gives a different reason. The Gemara will question the reason. So it's brought by Rav Yosef in the name of Rav Yehuda in the name of Shmuel. Rav Yosef is first going to quote what he learned and then he's going to say his kasha on it, which is Navi's kasha, which we'll all have. So Rav Yosef quotes Rav Yehuda in the name of Shmuel says the reason that a psula gets married on a Wednesday, the reason that it teaches me that a psula gets married on a Wednesday is because we have a halaha that a woman is supposed to get married a certain time, minimally, maximally, that is, from when she gets engaged. If she's a almana, she has 30 days. If she's a psula, she has one year in order to prepare for the wedding and for the married life afterwards. Now, if there's a delay, they don't get married in the time they were supposed to, the husband's responsibilities begin. He has to begin supporting his wife financially. He has to start feeding her because he was supposed to marry her already. Why does she lose the financial support she was supposed to get just because he was late with the wedding? And therefore, the financial support begins from the day that they were supposed to start. Unless he was prevented by a rabbinic decree, such as if the... And this is why... This is the reason of our Mishnah. This is not listed explicitly over there, but this is the reason of our Mishnah. Our Mishnah comes to tell me that she's only supposed to get married on a Wednesday to teach me that if the, if the let's say the year was up on a Sunday, so he, we ordinarily would say the year is up, he has to pay support for her now, but that's only true if it's his fault. Here, where it's not his fault, because the Rabbanon said that she has to wait till Wednesday, so from Sunday to Wednesday, he doesn't have to pay support. So that's the reason that uh, the Mishnah here teaches me that Absul gets married on a Wednesday, in order to tell me that it's not his fault from Sunday to Wednesday, he doesn't have to pay support. An additional halacha is that if she's a Bas Kohen, if she's a Bas Yisrael, she gets, and she's marrying a Kohen, she gets the Yitrimo already from the time that the year is fully up. So this is what Rav Yosef brings from Rav Yehuda in the name of Shmuel. And Rav Yosef asks Akasha on it. He says, how can you tell me a reason for a mission that says its own reason? The mission says the reason. The mission clearly says the reason because we want him to be able to go to court the next day. What are you telling me a reason? Now, there, there was some steps before the Gemara clarified what the question was. First, the Gemara said, why are you making a Mishnah dependent on a non-Mishnah. And the Mishnah said, what do you mean? That's also a Mishnah. And the Mishnah says, no, but that Mishnah doesn't give a reason. This Mishnah gives a reason. So you're going to make this Mishnah, which says its own reason, you're going to give it a different reason based on something else. So the Gemara, therefore, has to revamp what exactly Rav Yosef was quoting in the name of Rav Yudam uh, There was an expression here where he expressed surprise. He said, Murray Avram, master of Avram, how could you how could you say something like this? So what then is the revamped version of what Rabbi Huda in the name of Shmuel said? What he really said is as follows. What is the reason? And he incorporates the reasoning of our Mishnah with what he wants to add. So he says, what is the reason that Absul has to get married on a Wednesday? So that if there's a claim that she was not Absul, they should be able to go to court the next day, which is on Thursday. Why can't they get married on Sunday and go to court on Monday? Because the court convenes twice a week. The court convenes on Monday and on Thursday. So you're getting her married on Wednesday so that they could go to court on Thursday. Let her get married on Sunday so that they could go to court on Monday. 
So the reason is because we don't want a woman to have to make a wedding on a Sunday, a Monday, or a Tuesday. It's right after Shabbos. She needs to be able to prepare three days for the wedding without a Shabbos that she can't prepare. And therefore, we don't make her get married Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. But she should get married right away on Wednesday so that she can go to court on Thursday if necessary. Now, the continuation is as follows. Since we see from here, since we see from here that they gave her time to prepare for the wedding, and it's not the husband's fault that she's not marrying him, he's not able to marry her on Sunday. So if the 12-month period ended on Sunday, he doesn't have to start paying support beginning from Sunday. He only has to start paying from Wednesday. It's not his fault that they didn't get married until Wednesday. It's a Takanas Chazal. Now, Rav Yosef continues, and Rav Yosef says on his own, based on this, if there's some other only, some other unpreventable circumstance happens that prevents them from getting married, he doesn't have to pay for that either, such as for example, if he became sick and he couldn't do the wedding, or if she became sick and she couldn't do the wedding, or if she became a nida and they don't want to get married in a state of nidas, so he does not have to pay for that time. Okay, so this is the revamped quote, and Rav Yosef's added halacha. Now, the Gemara says, according to this version, Rav Yosef said clearly what halacha is. If she got sick, he got sick, or she became a nida. According to a different version of this Gemara, that was a question that was asked. It was part of a series of building questions one after the other. So the first question was, what happens if he got sick? Is that considered to be a preventable owner? So do we say, listen, you got sick, it's still your responsibility. It's not her fault. Now, if we say that he still needs to pay, then the logic would be as follows. It's only if the Rabbanon said they can't get married that he doesn't need to pay support. But if he had something happen to him, so he still needs to pay support. Now what happens though, let's assume that he needs to pay support if he got sick. What happens if she got sick? Can he now say, this is your fault, it's not my problem? Or can she say, look, you made a contract to marry me, you took possession, you took responsibility, you took responsibility, you now are responsible for me, I got sick, that's your problem, you bought something which got sick, right? So it's not my issue, you still need to pay support. Now let's say that time is accepted and she does have to pay support, what happens if she didn't get sick but she became a nida? So does she have the same claim that it's your problem, not mine? Now, there's two types of nida. There's nida that comes in the right expected time, and there's nida that comes in an unexpected time. So if it's the right expected time, then it's clear she can't say it's your fault. Why is it his fault? There isn't any indication that it's his mazel that caused this rare thing to happen. Her need just came in the right time. That's her uh, situation. If it's an unexpected time, that's the question. If we say, hey, something strange happened here, something unusual, this is your muzzle that had a problem, and this is your purchase that got messed up, and it's not her fault, or do we say, listen, it's pretty common, it's not totally common, but it's not uncommon for a woman to have her need a period come in a time which is not expected. So it could still be, this is your thing. Um, perhaps, therefore, we'll say that, um, it's still considered her responsibility, just like our need the on time would be her issue. A need the not on time is common enough that it's her issue. It's not his issue. So these are the uh, series of questions that we have. Now the Gemara says, let's try to answer them. So Gemara says, Rav Achai has a solution based on the wording of the Mishnah that says that they have to get married by 12 months from the date of Kedushin, and if they do not, then he's responsible. So the wording that it says, it says, Loi Nisu, Loi Nisu, he has to start paying support. That's Loi Nisu with a Yud, that means she didn't marry him. So that means we're saying she didn't marry him, he has to start paying support. And how does that make sense? Why would he have to start paying support if it's her responsibility that they didn't get married? It must be just talking about that it was an onus. If she did something wrong, clearly he wouldn't have to pay support. It must be that it was an onus, but it was an onus based on her, like she became a nido, she became sick. So this should answer the question and say that in the case where they didn't get married because of her, but it was an onus, he uh, still needs to pay support. So the Gemara rejects it. The Gemara says, no, it could be that it's not referring to where it's her fault, but it was an O's. It could be it's referring to where it was his fault, where he did something, he dropped his obligation. Why does it say she didn't marry him? It should say he didn't marry her. Well, so that's a stylistic thing, because the beginning of this Mishnah 
had said that we give her 12 months to prepare for the wedding, or she's an almana, we give her 30 days to prepare for the wedding. So here we're all talking about her. So we'll say that if she didn't marry him on time, but it's really talking about where it's his fault and not where it's her fault. Okay, this concludes the Gemara's discussion of an onus that happens in a marriage taking place in time. Now the Gemara goes to what happens if a man gives a divorce document. He gives his wife a get, he makes a condition, and he says, this is only going to be chal. Let's say the condition is if I don't come back by X date. And then an onus happens, something unpreventable, and he can't come back. Can he claim it's not my fault? I was an onus. I really was here on time. And therefore, this condition is really not chal. And the get is, and the get is not chal. It's not my fault that it that the condition was fulfilled. I was trying to stop it from being fulfilled, and therefore the get does not count. So the Gemara says that Rava says that that does not work. You do you do not have such a claim. Somebody gives a get out tonight, and it doesn't and he and he fulfills the tonight, even if it was by mistake, even if it was an onus, the get is still chal, and he can't back out of it. He can't claim that he was an onus. Now the Gemara wants to know what is the source of Rava's halacha. So the Gemara is going to look to a series of. Three Mishnayas, it's two Mishnayas with a third one, but it's three separate cases in Mesechah's Yitin. And the Gemara is going to try to pull out of these what, that uh, the source of Rav Salacha that a claim of an Ones doesn't work on a Tanai of a, a Get. So let's just do this three cases in order. It's talking about where somebody gives a Get to Bichal after he dies. So the first case is where he literally tries to make the get chal after he dies. He says, here's your get, it'll take effect after I die. Or if I die from this illness that I have right now, it should take effect. So that is not about conditions. That clearly doesn't work. A man cannot divorce his wife after he dies. You can only divorce a woman who's married. Once he died, she's free. She's already single. Now, if you're wondering if he dies, what's the difference if she's divorced or not? The answer is because if he dies without children and he has a brother, she falls to Yibam. But if she got a divorce, she's considered divorced and she doesn't fall to Yibam. Now, so that's the first halacha there, that a get does not take effect after he dies. And the next halacha is what if he says, here is your get, it should take effect 12 months from now. And there's a date written on the get, that's today. I'm giving you the get today, 12 months from now, this get takes effect if I don't come back, unless I come back and I cancel it. But if I don't come back by 12 months from now, the get takes effect. So there the halacha is that if he dies in between, the get does not take effect. Now, the third case is where he says, here's your get. From today, it takes effect. It takes effect now on the condition that I don't come back. In the, in the previous case, he didn't say from now. He said it takes effect in 12 months if I don't come back. Now he says it takes effect from now if I don't come back. There the halacha is that if he dies within the 12 months, the get is chal. So... The Gemara says, my proof is from the middle case. He said, here is your get, which should take effect in 12 months. If I don't come back, he dies, and therefore he doesn't come back. The Allah is that the get does not take effect. So the Gemara says, what's the reason? The reason must be because he's dead. Can't take effect after he dies. The fact that he's an onus and he couldn't come back because it's not, it's not his fault that he couldn't come back because he was dead, that's not an issue. Onus wouldn't be a good claim. The only problem with this is that he died, and therefore there's no marriage left to cancel with the get. So that's Rava's source, that an Ones does not help you. Says the Gemara, how do you know that that is what this Gemara is teaching you? Maybe both halachas are true. Maybe it's true that this get is no good because it's not he was an Ones and not fulfilling the condition. It's not his fault he didn't come because he couldn't do anything about it, he happened to be dead. Same thing would be true if he was alive and he couldn't come because he got sick or something. It doesn't fulfill the condition, but he's an onus. It's also true that this get can't take effect because he's dead and there's no get after Misa. And that that's the Mishnah is teaching me this halacha. A get can't take effect after Misa. That's It's teaching me that halacha, but the fact that it's an onus is also true. So it can't be teaching me that there's no get after me. So that was the first case. The first case was where he gave her the get and he said, this get should take effect after I die. We already know that that can't be. The Mishra said that clearly. So what's the condition of this? It can't be teaching me that it doesn't work because there's no get after me. So it must be teaching me that an onus doesn't count. And the only reason that this get doesn't work is because it's after Misa. And the fact that it's an onus is not a problem. That must be what it's teaching me. This doesn't matter. No, no, no. It could be teaching me 
that there's no problem here of being after Misa, of being after the death, and it's teaching me not to look at this case the way Rabbi Seinu do. The Gemara says there's Rabbi Seinu, who the Gemara identifies as Rehuda Marshmuel, who says you may say, and this is the opinion of Rabbi Yaisi in a Mishnah, you may say that in this case the get could take effect after he dies. Why? Because there is a date on the get, then the date is the time that he gave it to her. Why do you put that the date there if it's only supposed to take effect in 12 months? Why doesn't he just write 12 months time? That's the day that this get takes effect, unless I come back and I stop it. Why do you put today's date? So Rabbi Senu say, he's obviously trying to say, even though he didn't spell it out, he's trying to say it should take effect from now. And retroactively, if I don't come back at the end of 12 months, it should take effect from now, and I'm alive now. So therefore, we should look at it as if it's from now, and therefore the fact that he dies later doesn't stop it. The fa- it's not a problem of being a get lachar misa. So our mission is coming to teach me that is not true. We don't look at it that way. We say, no, he only meant for it to take effect later, and therefore it doesn't work. And we're not teaching anything about Einstein. It could be that Einstein would be a good claim. The reason that this get doesn't work is because we don't view it as, as if it's supposed to take effect from now. We view it as if it's supposed to take effect in 12 months, and he's dead already. Now, where is the halacha that where Rabbi Yaisi says that? So that's a halacha between Rabbi Yaisi and a Tanakama. In a different case, somebody who writes his property over to his son, that should take effect in 12 months, and he writes today's date, and there Rabbi Yaisi says he's only writing today's date because he wants it to take effect from now. So if he dies within 12 months, it still takes effect. Okay, and there the Chachamim argue on him. So, says the Gemara, therefore, we're left without a proof, and we're going to go to the third case and try to get a proof from, the, from there as to where Rav Adarav Zalacha, that a taina that he was an onus, does not work to stop a get. So, the case there is where he says, I'm giving you the get today, it should take effect today if I don't come within 12 months. The halacha is that if he dies, the get take, takes effect from today, and it's chal, she's divorced. So says the Gemara, what's the reason? The reason must be because he was an Ones. The fact that he didn't come after 12 months is an Ones. It's an unpreventable circumstance. And yet we see the Allah is that the get works. So obviously they claim that it's an Ones and it's not my fault. I couldn't fulfill the condition is not a good claim. And the same thing would be true in a different Ones. same thing would be true as if he got sick and he couldn't come. You can't come and say anything just like when he dies, it's not an excuse. If he got sick, it's not an excuse either. So the Ones says, no, maybe it's very different. Maybe if he would get sick, that would be an excuse. The reason, only the claim that he dies, that's not an excuse. And the reason is because the whole reason he gave the get was that if he dies, she should be divorced and not a widow. He doesn't want her falling to Yibam. So th- that's the whole reason that the 12 month condition not being, the fact that he dies is not considered to be an onus to, to call the condition unfulfilled and she's not divorced. The entire point of giving it was that if he dies, it should take effect earlier. But if he got sick, there would be a claim. He could say, I did not intend for this guy to take effect. I meant to come and stop it, but I got sick. Okay, the Gemara says, therefore, again, we're still looking for a source for Rav Halacha. The Gemara says, we have a different story. We have a case that happened where somebody gave a get, should it take effect from today, if I don't come within 30 days. He came on day 30, and he couldn't get across the river. The ship was on the other side, so he stood there on the other side screaming, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And Shmuel said, it doesn't count. He's not called being here. He doesn't have an excuse. So therefore, you see the claim that he's an owner doesn't work. The says, no, that's different again. There, the claim doesn't work because it was a very common owner. It's not a real owner. He should have thought the boat may be on the other side of the river, and he should have taken steps to avoid that. That's not a valid excuse. So it, again, what's Reva's reasoning? So the Gemara says Reva didn't have a source. Reva was saying something from his own logic. He was saying, we do not want to have a situation where people could make a mistake whether there was a real onus or not. Both people who are too careful and people who are too uncareful could get messed up by this. Let's say a lady is at Snua and they have a situation where she's really divorced. She may be afraid, hey, maybe my husband um, wanted to come and there was an onus and she'll never get remarried because she's afraid that her get really doesn't count because there was an onus. And really it should. And the opposite could happen. You could have a situation where there was an onus and the get is really no good, but the woman is a prutza. And she goes and gets remarried, and her kids are mamzer. So this is a scenario, this whole business of having an onus, is it an onus, is it not an onus, creates problems both ways. Therefore, when we made a rule, owns and don't count. And you never have to worry about, is it an onus or not, because an onus is never going to make a difference. 
So Morris is very nice, but you can have a situation then where she's not divorced because it was an onus, and you're saying that she is divorced because onus doesn't count. How could you make a woman who's not who is not divorced make her? How could you consider her to be divorced? Make her free to marry someone else? I mean, the right so she's a married woman, and you're allowing her to marry someone else. Because that's not a problem. We have a rule: hefker is hefker. The rabban can confiscate somebody's property, and therefore they confiscated the pri- the property that he used to be mekadesh in the first place, and its kedushin never counted in the first place. And Gemara says that's great if it was mekadesh with money, but what if he was mekadesh with bia? Says Gemara again, we still have a way of canceling that. Everybody who does kedushin is al das rabbanon. It's al das moshev yisrael, and therefore we could say that we do not agree to this kedushin. We cancel it retroactively. That bia that he did was a bia znos, and therefore she is allowed to uh, marry someone else. In a situation like this, we allow the get to happen.